What makes it so hard scouting college quarterbacks? I would say true toughness because a lot of these guys that are valued, you know, a lot of them go to bigger schools, right? When you just think about a lot of the misses over the years, they come from powerhouse programs, means they're not getting crushed a lot. They're not in games that look like what we just witnessed. Even the occasional like Ohio State, Notre Dame, they play in like one or two of those a year. Right, so think about the top programs. They actually don't play in that many knockdown, drag out games every year. So it's hard to like when shit really hits the fan. What does it look like when you're getting pepper? When your team's losing? When you're just in adverse situations? I would say the intangibles of, you know, reading complex defenses. Right, the defensive coordinators. I would say in the pros are higher level in the sense that you know you, there's no. I would imagine there's some brilliant guys in college too, but you just have less time to implement stuff. You're dealing with guys. Some of these guys have only played football three or four years, like starting in ninth grade. You right. You you can give more to JJ Watt at 30 years old than you can your five star guy, even like Alabama, right in the in his second year. So the complexity of what you're looking at, obviously the offenses are more complex. I think the combination of that, so the complexity yeah. of the football what football demands of your mind. Yeah. That's right. That that's, like, that's a great, that's like a high it. school to like graduate level and the intangible, the toughness thing is because you just see these guys get peppered and get up like that Penix moment to me in an evaluation in a draft meeting, I'd be like, I was there at Washington, Oregon and I watched this kid get fucking peppered and keep shaking it off and get back to the huddle. And I bet then, and then, you know, when you go in to talk to his coaches, his offensive coordinator would tell you, or, or the offensive line coach might tell you, he's like, my guard and center said he just kept shaking it off and looked at him, telling him to get their heads up. And he's like, damn, I love this guy. You yeah, know, that, yeah, that yeah. type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But like, you don't, you might not get that Ohio State or Alabama. It's like, yeah, two, it never really got touched. And when he did, right. he broke his hip. I always go back to Zach Wilson, right? Never got hit his last year at BYU. So with that said, I asked you that because I wanted this is uh, Kevin O'Connell on his, on his coach's show. He gets asked about Brock Purdy. And uh, this is what he said. Is it's easy to think Kyle and this run game and players around him, uh, but what I see is the guy playing quarterback at a really high level, throwing with anticipation, seeing the field, uh, making some critical plays on some third downs to extend drives and let them get back into what they want to be offensively on, on those early downs. Um, and he's consistently done it basically every game he's played since getting the opportunity to be in there. Um, so uh, he's a challenge. Uh, he's in complete control of Kyle's offense and what they're trying to do. Um, so you got to try to make him uncomfortable. You try to, you try to, the formula for a guy like Brock Purdy is no different than playing any other quarterback in this league. Try to make them uncomfortable. Try to make them feel like they've got to force some balls into some tight windows. And then can you make the play? Uh, tips and overthrows, we saw it. Last weekend in yep. Chicago, it'll be important that we try to see that a few more times this weekend at U.S. Bank Stadium. Got the sponsor in at the end there. Um, what'd you think? Did you see his save and hand movements? Yeah, I did. I did. There's no it's way like, if we uh, if we got a clip of him as a player, he talked like that. But no, job of a coach. I, I, I bet ten thousand dollars he never did hand movements. I, I bet there's a chance I, in the last three or four years he's implemented that i think a lot of these jimmy sexton clients or whoever his agent is they add that value yeah and, and maybe there is something to the psychological they say there is that like for public speakers hand gestures are effective tools of making points to people but we know I, it feels like it's pretty natural his name is brock I, purdy he plays quarterback it's like jesus christ good jaw line though I mean, great. Hair is. Did you notice that? Then I I did notice. Narrative that. is. It's easy to think Kyle like and this cross, run game too. and players around him. Very uh, relaxed. What I see is the guy playing quarterback at a really high level, throwing with anticipation, seeing the field, uh, making some critical so plays. That, that was the third. part. Um, <laughs> that was the part I, I I really wanted you to hear was the first compliments he gives him, which is throwing with anticipation and seeing the field. Which I feel like when when you like cover a young quarterback. Throwing with anticipation always comes up as a thing that's really hard to do. And of course it's hard. Like when you stop the film at the moment before you throw and you, I think it's, it's always really impressive to see where the receiver actually is when a quarterback has to decide to throw the ball to him is very different than what it looks like when the ball is arriving. Right. And then seeing the field, like 
you said kind of what I thought you'd say, which is what Kevin O'Connell said. Is that how how can you possibly really know with most college offenses whether or not a guy can do it? I was talking to a buddy of mine who uh, was a really good quarterback in college, who coaches quarterbacks now. And he was saying, we were just talking about quarterbacks in the league. He's like, you know, it's really hard because you guys are not asked to do that much. And so it makes it very difficult for them uh, if you choose to like, really have them read the defense as opposed to just read half the field or just go through progressions. He's like, it's a really different animal trying to find young quarterbacks who really read a defense is it's hard to do. You don't, there aren't a lot of them because their colleges aren't asking them to do it. Could argue there's a bigger gap between like the five-star guy in high school to college than there is even in college to the pros you're adding a lot, but think how hard it is. Like you're just, it's just all traits. If I'm playing at some powerhouse, I'm just kicking the shit out of everybody, like yeah. Arch Manning. I actually think Arch's team wasn't as good, but like that equivalent is why we see so many. We talk a lot about busts in the NFL. It happens just as many times at college, right? A guy not being good. Now, yeah. I mean, I think how many guys have to transfer because they suck, right? There's not any good. So Kevin O'Connell's probably got Brock Purdy by about seven inches. I mean, he's, I mean, he's like six six. Where do you go to college? Oh, San Diego State. 